Yay Networks. I feel like we need an intro song, like a Jetyard Mayhem intro song. But we do have an intro song. But one that I sing. Oh. Junkyard Mayhem. Junk, what writer we gonna find today? Shane. This is why I'm a writer and not a singer. Hi, everyone. We're back with episode four. We are back with episode four. Exciting. And it's a treat. Mm-hmm. They're all a treat, but this one <laughs> is extra delicious. According to us, they're all a treat. Yes, but this one has a story from very early in our relationship. A formative and terrible moment. Mm-hmm. And it ended up, well, we'll let you find out. <laughs> and then we're playing a brand new game Yep. called... Relationship advice. I think we need to come up with a better Still name. Still working on the name. For yeah, that that's one. not a fun name. But we found um, someone seeking relationship advice, and we were going to provide both terrible advice mm-hmm. and our real advice. Yeah. Which we are not qualified to give. So <laughs> take that one with a grain of salt. Last week, we told everyone about my horrific nightmare of. A sperm test mm-hmm. and about my suffering and how difficult that was as I, we, you know, learn more about IVF. Um, and now you've had your yeah. day of testing. I would like to say I find this very offensive because your test compared to my day of testing <laughs> is so, so not the same. So for you to make such a big deal about your horrific test and then for what I had to get tested? I mean, you, come on. Do you want to tell them about it? Do you want to? I do. Of course I do. You were brave. Because I, I really feel like everyone will agree with me that like you shouldn't have complained about your my sperm test, test. My test was borderline fun. Uh-huh. Like and I, mine. I had, like I had a good time. <laughs> it was it was fine. <laughs> and mine was not fun. I was dreading this appointment for three weeks, the three weeks leading up to it. It was an invasive test. Yeah, I had to get a couple of things done. I do not remember the name. Do you remember the name of it? It's like I a, never learned the actual name. Dista, pista, mista, so something? I had to. <laughs> I had no, not at all. It was like a hysteroscopy or something. Yeah, I dropped out of medical school in the first year, but just no, nope. no, you did not. Um, anyway, so I got an internal ultrasound done, uh-huh. a vaginal ultrasound. Uh, that I was like obviously nervous about, but that was not what was keeping me up at night. That wasn't the big boy. No, the one that I was terrified about was one where they have a little camera and they go all the way into your uterus. They go much further. Uh huh. Into the deepest parts of Hannah. And if you look this procedure up online, apparently other people get cramping. Yeah, my advice would be don't look this up online. Do not look it up online because I was, and also the doctor gave me antibiotics. I had to do a whole course of antibiotics. I had to take ibuprofen before the procedure, like 30 minutes before. So I was freaking out, fully prepared for this to be horrible. <laughs> and then the actual procedure itself was. Completely painless. You did not even feel it. Two minutes long felt like absolutely nothing. You didn't even know it was over at the end. Yep. She was like, we're all done. And I was like, what? I'm I'm so proud of you because like, hey, you went. You, I showed <laughs> I up. I feel like that morning you were contemplating, <laughs> just giving up on the whole IVF thing. I don't want children. <laughs> I don't want to do any of this. You were like, I do not want this amount of pain and suffering. Yep. But you did it, and you were brave, and it was fine. Ended up not being that bad. It was so fine. While Hannah was having her procedure, mm-hmm. I had a bit of an experience that was very junkyard mayhem, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to share it with you. Um, so, I intended to go into the procedure room with yeah. you. Um, you know, if you were going to be suffering, I wanted to be there to you know let you. Please me. Yeah, um, and I wanted that. I was like, oh, good, he'll be there with me. And I, you know, I would have offered moral support. So whatever. We got to the appointment, and when you were called in, I went with you, mm-hmm. and I was stopped in my <laughs> traps at the door by the nurse, and she said, no partners allowed yep. in the procedure room. Nope. Which, looking back, makes sense. Yeah. I don't know why I was so hot off yard 
Like it was a sterile environment. I know. They don't want me in there. Like, what if I was sick? Or, yeah, you know, it does like make that. sense. Or what if I like passed out? Yeah, you know, at the at the you're a, li- of it you're all. a liability. So yeah, we went up to the door. Shane was stopped, and I went back with him to the waiting area to help him move his controller because we still haven't hooked up the automatic controller mover. It doesn't matter. Well, that this this is an interview. That's period, true. So we need to describe. <laughs> this is a very specific. Disability like contacts. That's true. So to you, yes, of course. So <laughs> Shane's wheelchair joystick typically has a. It's on a motorized mount, and he typically has a little button that he pushes to move it onto his lap, where he can use it, and then completely out of the way to the side, so he can use his phone. And we took that little button off for a flight. Yeah, about a month or two ago. Yeah, and it, we're <laughs> really bad at being adults. So. We don't put things back on ever. It's. We're notorious for it. So it's not on there. It's still in the suitcase. And every, yeah, and every day we're like, oh, we should really put that on. It's such a pain that you can't get your joystick yourself. But we did not do that. So I was like, oh, I just have to run and help him. So we went back to the waiting area. I swung Shane's joystick out of the way. Now he cannot access it because it is not on a motorized anything. It is impossible for him to reach. So he is stuck. Yeah, I am stuck. Yeah. And the point of this was so that I could be on my phone yeah. communicating with Hannah yeah. if I needed to be or if she needed to be. Yeah. I, I can't use my phone when my joystick is in drive position. Yep. It was one or the other. It was wheelchair or phone, and we chose phone. So Hannah goes back into the procedure room. We kiss goodbye. I am now on my phone, and not 10 seconds after Hannah had disappeared, the same nurse came back into the waiting room and called out, Shane, my heart sank. Yep. Because this was a very big waiting room full of people. Mm-hmm. And I was stuck. Yeah. As was said, this nurse did not understand that or realize that. And she was very far away from me. Mm-hmm. So in order to go over to her, I would now have to yell, <laughs> oh, and I, I need your help. I... I, and she would have been like, what? Like, what? Yeah. And I would have had to yell explanations about why <laughs> I needed some assistance across the waiting room. Yep. I didn't believe it. I was like, why? What, did they, like, change their mind? Yeah. Did Hannah slip and fall? <laughs> like, what happened? So I open my mouth. I begin to call out <laughs> and embarrass myself. And as my voice is about... To ring out in the waiting room, <laughs> another woman gets up and goes in with the nurse. <laughs> Shane. There was another person named Shane <laughs> that was called in right after I had been denied. And she, <laughs> I would have yelled out, and can you imagine how <laughs> the awkward confusion. At the, at the other Shane would have been confused, <laughs> the nurse would have been confused. Everyone in the lobby would have been confused. <laughs> they would have been like, oh, sir, please, just just mind your own business. What are you doing? Why are you yelling? It is 8 a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> so thankfully, I didn't yell out. Oh. And I, everything kind of clicked in my brain in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Uh, and I avoided, I avoided actual junkyard mayhem. Yep. But it felt like a junkyard mayhem moment. Mm-hmm. It was close. <laughs> it was so close. Yeah. Thankfully, I was able to be on my phone the whole time. Talk to Hannah during the procedure. Yeah. You were like texting while you were having it done. Well, it only took like two minutes. So I was texting you being, yeah, I did text you in the middle of it. You were like, she's in. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> how's it feeling? <laughs> I didn't remember that. Yeah, I was really nervous. So I was just trying to distract myself. The doctor was like, I can tell you're very nervous. And I was like, yeah, I am really, really nervous. <laughs> so that was a little bit of mayhem, but yep. Hannah had her test. And we'll yes. keep you updated on you know further developments. Yep. So, next up, we have a very fun and ridiculous story from early on in our relationship. Yeah. We're going to tell it, and hopefully you're going to cringe with us. And uh, it's it's heartwarming. It's like a, a very foundational moment in our relationship, I, I think. I think it was one of the moments that we knew that we were, like, in love. Yep. And, like, it was going to work out more than just, like, yeah. for a month. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a trip break. And we'll be right back with that story. And we are back. Hannah had some tea. 
I, I asked did. for some tea, but she said no. Oh my God. I literally just said, do you want some of your tea? And you were like, no. I think my favorite joke is <laughs> telling people lazy during the duck and me when you're not, mm-hmm. you know, just making it up. Because That's nice. someone somewhere goes, she said no when he asked for tea. People believe that. You say a lot of things about me that people believe. And they're not true. <laughs> I remember the time I said that you smell bad and it became like a known fact online. It still is. I get messages being like, to deal with the smell. And I'm like, he was kidding. Thank you so much. But he was actually kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite thing ever. It's not my favorite thing. <laughs> All right. So let's get into the story that led to our matching tattoos. Mm-hmm. Hannah and I have matching tattoos. We do. We're, if you don't know, we're not going to tell you what they are yet. No. But you can guess. Think about it. Yeah, throughout the story. That's kind of fun. That's, that's a very good idea. What do you think our matching tattoos are based off of the story Aww. we're about to tell you? So now we're making our story into a little game. <laughs> All right, so this began, or this story took place, what? I'm so six, excited to see what you when you think I'm this was. I was six months into our relationship. What year was that? I, I have no idea what year. Take a second. 2016 mm-hmm. or 15. 16. Okay. Good job. I'm close. You, were re- you did a good job. I can't <laughs> believe it. Shane is always so off about dates. He'll be like, we got married. Mm, 2011? N- yep. <sighs> and I'm like, nope. Okay. So yeah, 2016, the summer, it was about six months after we started dating. And we were going on our first day trip away from Shane's parents' house. So we were long distance. I was visiting him. This was probably our fourth visit maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, you were and, spending like two weeks in Bethlehem. It was a oh, long yeah. visit. Yeah. This was the long one at the end of the summer. So this uh-huh. was my fourth visit. Yeah. And yeah, for this one, we decided let's actually leave Shane's parents' house. Like let's, we hadn't gone anywhere. Let's leave Bethlehem. Leave Bethlehem. I'm from a town called Bethlehem, by the way. That sounded like a religious reference. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's leave Bethlehem. That's, it's only, yeah, it's only a phrase. No, I, I <laughs> come from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Why is that not a phrase? Let's leave Bethlehem? Let's leave Bethlehem? That should be a phrase. I don't know. What would it mean? I don't know, but it should mean so- – it really sounds like a phrase. And back to the story. Here okay, we so – we were like, let's leave Bethlehem and go to New York City because it's only an hour away by bus. Mm-hmm. We were taking a bus and Shane's parents were away for a couple of days in Maine. Yes. I guess we weren't invited on that trip. So no, that would have been way better than New York City. <laughs> Why didn't we get to go to Maine? <laughs> so they were gone and we we weren't staying the night though. We were like, we don't want to have to carry bags around New York City. We're just going to go in in the morning and come back at night. And since mm-hmm. it's only an hour, we were going to get like 11 hours in New York City and we were perfectly happy with that. So the night before the trip, Shane's parents were still home, thankfully, or the story would have gone way worse. And we were watching a movie in the basement. Just Shane and I were watching a movie. It was like 11.30 maybe at I, night? I don't think it was that late. I think it was like 10 because our bus was at 6.15. True. We really don't do bed early. And we had to get up really early to go to this bus at like 5 in the morning. And so I think at around 10, we were like, it's time for bed. Let's go to bed. We were also sick. Yeah. I just remember that. We were both sick. We had been sick. And like neither of us was still sick, but we had coughs. I remember just like lingering yeah, coughs. Yeah, we were recovering. From we were recovering. Sickness. This was like pre-pandemic when like I know. people just did things while they were sick. But we were, I know, but we were not sick. <laughs> we did not do things while we were sick. So Our lawyers are telling us to say that oh we my did God. not do things while we were sick. Just saying. <laughs> I wasn't sick. Personally, I was not sick. Every time I got sick, I would get a cough for like two weeks after. That's Same. what I had. Same. Exactly. There we go. So we're done with our movie and we're ready to go to bed. Shane goes to turn his chair on to drive to the bedroom and it will not turn on. Which is not normal. Not normal. If you're familiar with wheelchairs, uh huh. They, they're supposed to turn on when you turn them on. Whenever. Anytime. At the push of a button. And so we're pushing the button, the button, <laughs> over and over again. I'm connecting and disconnecting power cords. We are becoming frantic yes and no matter what we do we cannot get this stupid wheelchair (laughs) to turn on so i go and get shane's dad and he's probably already almost in bed or like definitely asleep asleep (laughs) and i'm like can you please help shane's wheelchair won't turn on so he comes down he's trying to get it on it will not turn on it is officially dead that wheelchair took its final breath yep on that night never turned on again now this is a problem see it now (laughs) I cannot walk. <laughs> you kind of need that this wheelchair. This complicates many things in my life. And so, thankfully, 
I had another wheelchair in the garage mm -hmm. of our house yep. that was my quote-unquote new wheelchair. Yes. It's actually the one you're sitting in right now. It is. It's the one you use now. Changing from one wheelchair to another is a very, very difficult and frustrating and painful process. So being the stubborn person that I am, when I got my new wheelchair, mm -hmm. I simply put it in the garage <laughs> and said I will use this never. <laughs> Three years went by from the moment I put that wheelchair in the garage until this night that my wheelchair died. Yep. So we go and get the wheelchair. <laughs> And it is not suited for Shane. Like he said, switching wheelchairs is really difficult. This one was not comfortable. He could barely sit in it. So Shane's dad has the drill out. He's drilling parts onto it. Duct tape. Yeah, we're taping things. We're putting cushions in different areas. And we get it so that Shane can, you know, kind of sit in the chair. He can kind of drive it. It's okay. It's not comfortable, um, but it'll do. And I keep saying to Shane, we don't need to go to New York City. Like, this is not a necessary trip. So let's just cancel that in our minds. And then this will be a lot less frantic. Like, we can just handle this tomorrow. And Shane is like, no, we are going to New York City. We have to talk a little bit about something that I have lived with for most of my life that I refer to as my burden complex. Mm -hmm. When you live with a disability like mine and you rely on other people for every aspect of your daily life, basically, it can be the case that at times you can feel like a burden to mm -hmm. other people. I had a very, very hard time with that throughout my life, feeling like I was a burden to other people. And in this moment, when my wheelchair was dead and now we had to figure out how we were going to possibly get to New York City, you know, in a way that was not... Hannah carrying me on her shoulder, <laughs> my burden complex was firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. All I could think about was that Hannah was going to resent me and my disability because of this problem that was ruining our trip to New York City that we were so excited about. Mm -hmm. I thought if she connects the dots here, she's going to realize, oh, like, his wheelchair, his disability, that's a burden. That was ruins trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in my brain, that meant she would inevitably say goodbye and our relationship would be over. Mm -hmm. It's a very unhealthy way of thinking about disability. But in that moment, that was all I could think about. So I was adamant that we were going to New York City, damn it, no matter <laughs> what it took. <laughs> And like at that time, especially, I was just so giddy to be in Pennsylvania with you, to be around you. I could not have cared less about going to New York City, and you, truly. And you expressed that to me yeah. probably a hundred times that night. Yeah. But the, I just thought you loved New York City. <laughs> I was like, oh, he really wants to go. <laughs> the nature of a burden complex is, or my burden complex, is such that I was not listening to Hannah yeah. when she said like, hey, would you just stay here and lay on the couch and watch movies for two weeks, whatever. Yeah. So we finally get the new wheelchair kind of situated for me. It's painful. I can't really drive it that well. Mm -hmm. But it was going to be enough to, like, get on the bus and go to New York City. Yep. So we go to bed. We go to bed. And we dream wonderful, <laughs> stressful dreams. We slept for <laughs> probably three hours. <laughs> we arrive at the bus the next morning the driver, when we walked up, kind of looked puzzled and then turned us away. He was like, no, 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 I, I can't take a wheelchair. And we were like, no, no, we, we specifically booked the wheelchair accessible bus. Like we came here a couple days ago and made sure that this was a wheelchair accessible bus. And he was like, but it isn't. And I was like, sir, I'm looking at your bus right now. I'm looking at the lift in it. You pointed. And it is absolutely a wheelchair accessible like, bus. The, the ramp is right there. It's, it's right there. Right behind that door. Yep. It oh. is as if he had just, he opened his eyes and saw the <laughs> ramp for the first time. He could not believe it. He was like, my bus mean, is accessible? Look at that. <laughs> How do you use it? So this oh. man had obviously never... Not just seen the ramp, but used it. He had not used it. So 
Uh, he got an, a helper, like some other employee to help him. All in all, it took about probably 30 minutes yeah, to get me 30 minutes. on that bus. And I would just like to note that while the door for the ramp yep. is open, the interior of the bus <laughs> emits a shrieking alarm, alarm noise, like ear piercing horrible loud. Yep. So those poor other bus it was a riders full bus. sat there for 30 freaking minutes yep. while this guy tried to figure out how to get me on with this alarm blaring. Yeah, 30 minutes late to New York City, so I hope they weren't late for anything specific. Burden complex <laughs> is running wild in my brain. So we finally get on the bus. We get to New York City. At this point, the bus driver has once again forgotten that he has a lift on this bus. He was he, like, sure, I have no way to get you off here. There are how only did you stairs. get on? <laughs> <laughs> so I, at this end, I helped him get the ramp on, you know, undone and all of that. We finally get Shane off the bus. And we are heading to breakfast. We had a very specific itinerary because it was Shane, obviously. I'm a bit type A. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a plan. I think we knew where we were going for breakfast even. We had it picked out. We looked at menus the night before. Uh It was also the hottest day in recorded human history uh, with a humidity level of like 103%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was close. If you've ever been in New York City at that temperature in the middle of August – you know that it smells just lovely. I can remember so, the smell. I'm just setting this in here. It was a hot, yeah. muggy trek to breakfast. Yep, and it's like 7 a.m., we're, but we're really excited. We're in good spirits. We're in great Given spirits. the situation, <laughs> we're in good spirits. I'm a little bit like, oh, am I being a burden? Like, uh, yeah. But overall, I'm but like, we're excited. amazing. Yeah, we're here. We did it. We're in love, and we're in New York City. Yeah. So we go to breakfast, and... Our plan for the day, the big event was going to the Natural History Museum, and that was maybe like 30 blocks from the train station that we had arrived at. Mm -hmm. So it was a long walk, and everything that we had planned for breakfast and lunch, that was all on the way. So we're walking. We probably walk 10 blocks, and Shane starts noticing that his wheelchair battery is draining very quickly. Faster than it should. A wheelchair battery should last a few days yeah. of pretty heavy usage. My battery, as we were going to breakfast, was dropping down to half-life yeah. and then 25% and then lower. Uh-huh. And I'm noticing this and not wanting to say anything because if I say it, that makes it real. <laughs> Maybe I can just ignore it and it will <laughs> all go away and everything will be fine. But when we got to breakfast, yep. where a man gave me $20, for simply being disabled. He came into the restaurant. He saw you through the window, came in, handed us a $20 bill, and said to Shane, Jesus loves you, I and said, walked out of the restaurant. I said, yes, he does. Thank you. <laughs> $20 for me. Put it right in my pocket. Anyway, my battery was at almost zero, yeah. and I had to tell Hannah. Yeah. And so we had Shane's charger with us, which is not normal. We don't carry Shane's wheelchair charger. That's still the most bizarre thing in it, that's ever happened. And we can <laughs> thank your mom for that. I'm 100% sure that she was like, take this. You left this in the garage. We don't know if it's charged enough in one night. Just take the charger. Uh, thank goodness she did that because we needed that charger quite a bit. So we charged it up at breakfast. But the problem with wheelchair chargers and batteries is that they need to be charged for big, big time slots. It's like about eight, eight hours, hours yeah. in a row. To and you're really not charge it. you're not supposed to plug it in and unplug it in like small amounts of time. Yeah. So sitting at breakfast, we charged my chair for 20 minutes, mm-hmm. doing the thing that we're not supposed to be doing, Yep. charging it for a short amount of time. <laughs> that brings the battery back up to maybe 30%. I yep. have no idea. But that's not a true 30%. That's like it's telling us 30, but it's probably more like five. Yeah. Our day in New York City, a day that was supposed to be full of adventure and sightseeing and delicious food yep. became solely focused on finding outlets in New York City. Yep. We charged the wheelchair in the Natural History Museum. We did make it there. We did. We but, did. At this point, we didn't think it was such an emergency. We no. were like, we'll just charge it as we go. It's mm-hmm. fine. Uh, so we charged it at the museum right across from an exhibit that a little family was looking at, like <laughs> just in the middle of everything. People were like stopping in the museum to ask us 
if we needed assistance. Yeah, we looked like we did. We were sitting on the floor. You were on the floor. Yeah. My chair was plugged in. <laughs> they were like, is this part of the museum? What's, what's happening? <laughs> what exhibit is this? So we uh, charged it at a coffee shop. We charged it. You know, it got more and more dire dire <laughs> as the day went on. We started after the History Museum. We were pretty much like, let's just aim toward the train station and work our way back. Yeah, let's make sure we get back to that train yep. before the final one of the day leaves you know, in the evening. Yes. So we're heading back that way. We hit some coffee shops along the way. To charge. We hit a, a restaurant for, <laughs> for dinner along the way. And it's getting worse and worse. I'm almost having to push Shane's chair. We're like, I'm I'm kind of helping it along. It's blinking. We go into a weird little mall area uh, and charge at a L'Occitane, like the lotion, bath, you know, the body works they shop. Were, the L'Occitane was... Closing for the evening. The whole mall was. They were like pulling down all the slots, and we were like, "No, let us in." It was like nine p.m. by this point, and yeah. they were closing. And I said to the employee, "Hey, like, here's my situation. Really need some help. Yeah, can I charge my chair? I had to charge it behind the cash register. She had to unplug one of the, her <laughs> items because there was. She was like, the only outlet in the store is underneath my cash register desk. Like, so come here. I was basically an honorary <laughs> loss of ten employee for that." Short little 10 minute charge. And you know what's funny is we bought a chapstick at, to, to like say thank you because we felt bad for <laughs> taking their energy and their her time and all of that. But like it was like we bought a chapstick. It was like Shane. A $2 I chapstick. Why didn't we buy like. She bought everything they a, had. Like at least a $10 lotion. Like we literally were. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Let me buy the smallest item <laughs> you sell. Do you have anything that's free? Um, <laughs> As we are making our way back to the bus, it's becoming clear that we might not make it. Yep. And that was something that was a bit unknown. Yeah. You know, like, what would we do if we could not get the last bus back to Bethlehem? Yep. We would be stuck. So we're going, we're going, stopping to charge here and there. There are very few outlets in New York City. <laughs> you would think for a city with that many people, it would just be... Riddled Overflow with outlets. With, I know. With outlets. There's like eight in New York City <laughs> for public use. Um, and around 11 p.m., yeah. like this is taking forever, <laughs> yeah. we missed the final bus. Yep. We're and about 10 blocks away. We know the schedule, away. and it leaves. We pull into a coffee shop to charge my chair one last time and figure out what the hell we're going to do now that we're stranded in New York City, mm -hmm. and I kind of had a breakdown. I All I could say to Hannah was like, I'm sorry that I have ruined your day. I, like, my wheelchair, I'm so sorry. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to tell you. My burden complex is, like, the worst it's ever been. Yeah. And Hannah responded in the most beautiful way that I can fathom. She said to me, Shane, you are the furthest thing from a burden right now. This has been the most fun, hilarious, ridiculous day that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving every minute of it. Like, think about how funny this is. Yeah. And we kind of melted <laughs> into laughter. Yeah, I remember saying, if we had just had the day that we planned. It would have been fine. It would have been fun. We would have had a good time. But the story that we have, the way that it did happen, is so much better. And we had so much fun the entire day. We were laughing <laughs> almost nonstop. And something about Hannah's response clicked a gear in my brain. And it began the process of me overcoming my burden complex. Having this woman that I loved immensely tell me that my disability and everything that came with it was not a burden to her and that she was having fun even in the midst of like disability related difficulties it, it opened something inside of me and I began to view my disability in a more positive and accepting way mm -hmm. and I could not have done that without you <laughs> my love um, <laughs> this giant debacle in New York City was a hugely formative moment for us and it kind of solidified the fact that 
we were a extremely compatible. Yeah. B like you were gonna be profound for my disability <laughs> burden complex stuff, um, and that we could like have immense fun even in the midst of chaos. I was checking all the boxes. You we were checking every profound. Box. And you were hot. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like physically, it was oh, hot. It was, it was really hot. So Your temperature was high. I remember we got turned away from the first hotel. Oh, yeah, that was Remember terrible. that? They were like, we have no rooms. You were like pushing me in. <laughs> you were like, this man's battery is dead. Do we have a room? They're like, nope, no <laughs> rooms for you. Uh, the second hotel we went to did have a room. And uh, the unfortunate part about all of this, the part of the story that really can't be redeemed <laughs> is that... <laughs> We weren't planning on staying overnight, so we yeah. obviously hadn't brought anything. No. And we had we mentioned that it was 104 degrees. I actually think it did hit 104 it degrees. Did, I yeah. think that was the temperature that day. Um, and we were extremely sweaty. And the next I morning- I was sitting in a puddle. Yep. A puddle of myself. The next morning, we had to re-put on the clothes that we had worn and <laughs> sweated all in the previous day. And then ride a public bus it home. Was, Horrible. Those poor people. I know. Sitting near us on that bus. But we were happy. We were so happy. That was a joke. That mayhem moment. <laughs> yeah, <it was. laughs> so that is our New York City trip. And yeah. if you've guessed what our tattoo oh, yeah. ended up being a few years later, um, Hannah and I got... One year later. See, I'm terrible just, at time. Just to be specific. A year later, Hannah and I got a matching battery symbol tattoos. Yep. To commemorate the day that my battery died, died. <laughs> again and again and again. All right, we're gonna take a trip break, and then we'll be back with a brand new game, relationship advice. <laughs> All right, we are back, and it is time for relationship advice. Ooh. We really need to snap your name for that. That's Rel your job, Shane. Relationship advice from the two people who might be at least qualified to give it. Why are we least qualified? We're not least I qualified. I, I feel like anyone giving advice I know. about anything <laughs> needs to be A, like 75 years or older, uh -huh. enough time to have like experienced it for their entire life. Uh -huh. No one but like a sage should be giving advice. Okay. Well, then why did you pick this as a segment? Because it wasn't my idea. <laughs> Touche. We actually, this is a very similar situation to us. So I think we are qualified to give advice. I think the reason we're playing it is because our forte mm -hmm. is our relationship. We make right. videos about our love story. Yeah, and so, it's going pretty well, our relationship. You know what? You're right. It is going very well. <laughs> <laughs> so listen to our advice because we know what we're talking about. All right. So here is what the person said. Oh, do you want to explain where we found this? Shane found it online on Reddit. Yes. There's Under a, relationship advice. A place where people, can anonymous ask. people, yeah. can write in asking for advice. Yep. And then other people can weigh in. Yep. So this is what the asked you. It kind of sounds like you wrote this. Me and my girlfriend are in a long distance relationship. We recently started dating and she is the quiet slash silent kind. That does sound like you. <laughs> I like I how. I swear to God, <laughs> you can doodle this verbatim on Reddit and find it. You didn't make this up. I did not make this up. To talk about me. I like how it goes quiet slash silent. Those are two different things. So our phone calls have a lot of awkward silences. She and I have no common ground, except we don't like reading, LOL. But it's a woman I like and want to keep things interesting. Do you have any date ideas or conversation ideas or fun activities we can do together? I have already tried watching Netflix movies and documentaries and podcasts with her, as well as picking random questions listed off the internet. All right. All right. So the way we're going to play this is first, we are going to give bad advice. Yes. These should not be followed <laughs> by any means. Hopefully, you don't come into this video at like after this disclaimer uh -huh. and hear us giving this advice and think we're just and think we're giving real advice. First, we're starting out with bad advice. Mm -hmm. And my first piece of advice is that you should fight her silence with silence of your own. <laughs> if she doesn't want to talk, you don't talk and do not give in. Five minutes go by without either of you saying a single thing. Fine. 10 minutes. Fine. Be brave, be strong, 
do not give in, be silent. I have kind of conflicting advice okay. to to battle yours with. Yes. I think that a better way to respond than yeah. fighting silence with silence would be to fill in for her half of the conversation. Ooh. If she's not giving you what you want, yeah. say her lines back. That like like play pretend. both parts. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, ready? Like Become this. her. <laughs> Become her. <laughs> Embody her. Hey babe, how you doing today? I'm doing good. <laughs> That's how you sound in my mind. <laughs> oh yeah, what did you have for dinner? Chips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chips what? for dinner. Why did I eat chips for dinner? I, this is just my fantasy. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. You know, pretend to be her. Out loud, maybe it'll make her so uncomfortable that she'll either begin to talk more or hang up the phone. Yeah, and, and you'll f- you'll feel more comfortable because no more awkward silence. Yeah. There you go. And one other idea that just came to mind is kind of Pavlov it. You know Pavlov's Excuse dogs? Me? Uh-huh. Are you familiar? Uh-huh. With the experiment where I am. Pavlov trained animals to salivate at the ring of a bell. Uh-huh. Maybe every time she does speak, mm-hmm. reward her in some way. <laughs> ring a bell. <laughs> Fart. You know? I, neither of those really sound like rewards. I think you're going to have to come up with something. Make some kind of noise. It's rewarding. That she begins to associate with her speaking. Uh-huh. Eventually, you do this for a month, a few months, a year. Oh. It will get to the point where all you have to do <laughs> is ring, ring a, bell a little bell. Or fart. And she'll just begin speaking. Wow. Yeah. It's a great idea. I don't know. This is all horrible advice. <laughs> and that's the point. All right, but let's talk about... Real advice. Yeah. How can we help this couple going through some silent times? Well, I think, first of all, something that kind of concerns me, I need to bring it back up, uh-huh. is the idea of like our phone calls have a lot of awkward silences mm-hmm. because I have never found silences in conversations to be awkward. Mm. And I am not really that compatible with people who do find silences to be awkward. Uh, people that have to fill yeah. silent spaces annoy. I know. Both of us. And that's why when we would FaceTime, it's okay for there to be some silences. So my advice to this anonymous person is you're annoying. (laughs) Stop needing to fill every second. (laughs) No, I mean, some silences are awkward, I'm sure. But like overall, if it it might, some of it might be that she doesn't find the silences to be awkward and she's just thinking. Maybe she's comfortable. And you're like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh Mm -hmm. God. I need to fill the silence. Yeah, I think one reason that we are positioned well to give advice on this is that this was kind of our dynamic you yeah know? you were more shy when we met and yep. i was happy to talk yeah i would have done the game where i just speak for you if it <laughs> yeah. wasn't weird to do um <laughs> i'm happy to talk all day long um so we had to figure out ways to like make sure you were feeling comfortable yeah but also like have conversation that we found invigorating or whatever yeah shane and definitely dealt with this with like how do i get her to talk a little bit more <laughs> and you did ask all kinds of questions you know Something else that this person mentioned that I think is smart of them Mm -hmm. is that they found questions from the internet to kind of make the conversation more lively. We did something similar, and my advice would be to gamify it a little bit. Games of any kind are helpful. Um, But Hannah and I played a game where we would ask each other a question, Mm -hmm. and then the person responding had to end their answer with a question. Yep. So the game was, can you keep the questions going? Yeah. Which naturally led to more speaking. Yeah. And we learned a lot about each other in that, that game. Yep. <laughs> Another thing we did was we found games for our phones that could be played, oh, yeah. you know, like multiplayer uh, far away from each other. A favorite of ours was pool, eight ball pool. <laughs> Uh, is exactly what it's called, and we played that pool game while we were on FaceTime with yeah, each other. Yeah, sit silently. Yeah. On, well, not silently, but like... Like react to the game and chat. gave us something to talk about. Exactly. Because it is hard. I mean, after a while, you do run out of things to yeah. actively like ask each other or talk about. You can only be like, how was your day for so long? Yeah. So having things to like talk about yep. is super helpful. Yep. For us, though, like playing 8-Ball Pool or any other game that we played... Often just led to like arguments. Hannah's very competitive. <laughs> I'm so competitive. It's horrible. It's a horrible <laughs> trait. 
the last little piece of advice that I wrote down was that you mentioned that you have no common ground mm. with your partner. That to me is a big red flag. Mm. Is it to you? Do you I feel like, like I would need. No? I know. I feel like I'd need a little more context. Like, what does no common ground mean? Yeah. Because yeah, that does sound like a red flag to me. But like, I mean, people can be very different. But no common ground is just a very odd way of phrasing. Yeah. Something about your partner, except for that you don't like reading. Yeah. So that makes me feel like the person might be a little bit younger and is using like interests to mean common ground. True. You know, like you yeah. like skateboarding and I like swimming. Like that's no common ground. You know, but. I feel like you do need. Uh, I feel like you should aspire yeah. to have a few interests that in overlap because it gives you something to talk about. Yeah. Um. So maybe you know this is a a hard piece of advice to give, but if you really feel like you have nothing in common, let's just take it at face value. And you can't find anything. If you like, can't find anything that know. you have in common, create an interest together. You know, not every relationship has to work out. Yeah. There will be other people out there that have more in common with you that yeah. you find conversation to be much easier with. Yeah. And same for your partner. Um, I'm not telling you you break up instantly. Yeah. But if you really have no common ground, that that's gonna be tough. Yeah. In the long run. Yeah. And on that dreadful piece of advice, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> what a nice good one. Good job picking that one, Shane. I like this year now. I like I do too. You know, thinking about relationships different than our own. Yeah, I know. Although that was pretty similar. It was exactly like ours, and it, it made us think a lot about ours. Wow. And how incompatible we are. So <laughs> I have something to tell you. <laughs> oh, here it is. The moment everyone online has been waiting <laughs> for. All right, let me down slow. All right, Jane. Well, everyone, that was episode four. Yeah, of Air Mayhem. we did it. What are we supposed to tell them now? There's like all those things. Uh, please rate. Uh, rate, the, rate podcast. the podcast. Give us a star. Yeah, rate five, stars. five preferably. Leave a review. Yep, leave a review, leave a comment. Yeah. And have a wonderful day. Yeah, and come back next week for episode five. It is a junk yard out there. I need to find a battery because my video chair is about to die. Wow, that was a good one. Bye. <laughs>